Hello, everyone. Welcome. If you do not know who I am, my name is Emily and I am the owner and artist at Weathered Hearts Designs. And I'm a furniture artist. I am a um, content creator for Dixie Bell Paint Company. I am a brand ambassador for Would You Bend Molds. Um, I do a lot of DIY home improvement on a budget, home decorating, painting furniture, all kinds of stuff here. So um, we worked on part one of this old world style. It's actually the back of the desk um, that I'm working on now. But we started part one where we created the soft um, blend. And now I am going to be grunging it up and making it look more old world style. So I hope that you will join me and um, let me know if everything looks good on your end. It would be very helpful since um, I'm not used to going live on YouTube just yet. This is only my second time going live, so I'm still trying to figure it out. But I'm going to be working with um, just a few colors tonight. And I'm going to open them up and get them ready. That way I can just go ahead and pull straight from them, maybe. I apologize if that was really loud. Sometimes you gotta bang your, your containers on the ground. <laughs> when you're like me and you paint out of the containers because they get really gunked up around the edges, making them hard to open. All right. So the first color that I am going to start with is Dixie Belle uh, Midnight Sky. And this is a charcoal black color. So it's not like the deepest black, like caviar. It's more of like a chalkboard black where it looks a little bit more dry and just slightly lighter. It has almost like that grayish tone to it. And I'm going to be applying it with the Dixie Belle Premium Chip Brush. This is just a two inch chip brush. I will show you quickly if you are not familiar with their brush is the difference. So this is a regular chip brush. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of bristles. They're very, very jaggedy. This is the premium chip brush and it is much more full. The bristles are a lot softer and it's more of like a flat cut across the top versus this one that's very uneven. So I'm using the softer of the two and the one that has more bristles. Oh, before I forget, because this step I actually do need one second. I need, um, actually I'll go this way, paper towels, or you could use um, an old rag, an old t-shirt rag, but I'm going to be dry brushing, so I need to make sure that I keep my brush very dry. And I am going to just take a little bit of the midnight sky on the tip of the bristles, and then I'm going to dab the majority of it off. And I'm lightly going to blend, uh, or not necessarily blend, but kind of just dry brush this straight up from the bottom. And there's gonna be a few layers here, so it's gonna start looking a little weird at first until we get more of these layers in. And I'm going to kind of follow my pattern where I have the darker colors pulling up along the sides further than in the middle where it dips down. that little bit of paint that's in my brush 
I'm going to tap and pull and tap and then pull it upwards. I don't want really harsh bristle marks, but I do want to build up the darkness and the grunge um, and shadowing look on this piece. From my inspiration photo, basically what I'm trying to create right now is the look of as if this was weathered wood underneath and it had been painted um, over time with different layers of paint in kind of like that light green um, and light blue patina color. And this is gonna be the look of the wood that's peeking through. So we're gonna have to layer quite a few um, colors in to get it to look that way, but is this the whole entire finish is just a process of um, layers, really. <laughs> lots and lots of layers. It by no means is like a very difficult finish. It's just very time consuming. questions, feel free to ask them. Um, I do believe that I will see them at the side, hopefully. Perfect. All right, the next color that I am taking, and I'm going to do the same process with three different colors. So the next color is Dixie Bell Coffee Bean, and this is their darkest espresso color of paint. It's not super warm, which I love. I actually like to water this down and use it as a stain on raw wood um, versus using an actual stain. And it just gives a very nice rustic um, brown tone without being too warm, too orangey, um, too reddish. It's very neutral. So I'm going to take the same brush and again, get a little bit of the coffee bean on my brush and dab most of it off and layer on top of what we just put on here. And this will bring in some areas of that slight wood tone um, or brown wood tone. We're also going to layer a gray in here. Now I can start to get a little bit looser with this color. I am going to kind of tap it around a little bit and break up that look of just like the, the brush pulling the paint straight up. I'm gonna to start to add little areas that kind of look like they've been weathered and it'll add to the more authentic look of uh, paint that had worn back over wood.
I hope you all are having a fabulous day. Hopefully stress-free. Just a great Thursday. So you can see I have a little bit um, of a too much paint in these areas. So I'm actually going to take my paper towel and just gently wipe back at some of this. Now it's not going to take it all the way back down, but that's fine because I'm going to layer a slightly lighter color over it and then I'm going to pull in some blues and add more to the patina look. And I can kind of cover up some of those areas that are a little bit dark for what I was going for. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I really don't want um, any wet paint in it. I just want that dry uh, paint that has built up in my brush. And I'm actually going to go like this and just pull it over the lighter areas. And the key is to have it so dry that you don't get, you don't want the paint um, to give you like brush marks. But what it's doing is it's catching on any areas of texture, any of those little areas that are raised, because I added a bunch of texture in the previous steps to make it look again like it's been layers and layers of old paint that has worn back. But this is catching on those layers and just grunging it up a little bit so that it's not perfectly clean and bright up here and then dark and decrepit at the bottom. I want it all to flow and look um, authentic to the, the overall look that I'm going for. All right, I'm not sure if you guys can really even tell um, if that made a difference on your end because we are on my laptop after all, and I know the quality isn't quite the best, so I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers so that I can switch over to my phone camera, which will be a little bit better at least. <laughs> all right, now the third color that I'm gonna add to this area before I start pulling in blue is Dixie Bell Gravel Road, and this is I would say that this is their darkest gray, but it's a muddy gray. So it has more of like a brown undertone versus, um, let me hold up Hurricane Gray. Hurricane Gray is just slightly lighter and it has more of like a cooler undertone, whereas this is very muddy. So this goes along with the weathered wood and um, the chalkboard black, the um, espresso, coffee colored brown tone and I'm going to layer this right over what we've already added using the same method same brush the great thing is you don't really need a lot of tools uh, you do need different paint colors to give you different variations for this look but you don't need a bunch of brushes really you could get away with two brushes for this whole entire look of overall, I believe on the front, I ended up using 12 colors, which is a lot. Um, and I didn't quite need all 12, but it was just a layering thing and trying to figure out what would give me this look.
All right. I think we're ready for some blue. Now this is gonna be a really awesome pop of detail. And this is probably my favorite step of this whole process. So I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell Antebellum Blue, which is a really pretty gray, blue, green. <laughs> gray, blue, and green. And this is gonna be my patina type of color. Same brush, same method. Get a little bit on the bristles. Dab the majority of it off. And then I'm gonna take this. Now it's very easy to get carried away with this step, so I always have to remember Add a little bit and then step back or uh, put the brush down. <laughs> Don't try to cover everything up that I just added because that's not what I'm going for. I just want it to have some areas of this blue. can see that or not. Let me try sample. Slide a little bit closer maybe. I'm not sure if that helped. Um, Christy, actually I did not, thankfully. Uh, I, I was inside and it was very windy out and I heard this like very, very loud bang um, on the roof. And it scared me and I thought, because we have a lot of really big trees around our house, I thought that maybe it was um, a big branch that fell off of one of the trees. And I went outside and I was trying to uh, shine my phone flashlight on the roof, like from the ground, <laughs> trying to see what I could see. And it was raining and um, extremely windy. So I didn't want to pull out a ladder and try to climb up on the roof or anything like that at the time, but I did see pine branches. And so I figured it was a big limb. I went out there this morning and it, it was a stick. It was a twig. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was so loud when I was inside that it made me and my dogs jump. And it was just a very small stick. That was it. <laughs> so thankfully, no, we didn't get um, any any damage from the wind. We just gotta get up on the roof now and clean the gutters. And got a bunch of pine needles up there. Um, we have tons of leaves in the yard now. <laughs> We're gonna rake up. Our yard is just covered with like probably about four inches of leaves. It is, there's so many leaves. Did you guys get any wind damage where you guys are? Okay, now I am going to Start to get most of this out of my brush. And I want to pull this around. Get more of the blue tones pulling through.
And just like that. And this will get uh, probably one more layer where I go through and I just, um, I'm gonna lightly add in a little bit more to fill it in so it's not so harsh. Like this area right here is really dark. Uh, I feel like this over here needs to just really gently be lightened up. So I'm gonna try to add a spot of blue in there, but I'll go through and layer the um, black, brown, and gray in one more time. And then this blue over top of it. But for the most part, this is it's looking pretty neat. You can see it definitely looks a lot more aged than what we started out with over here. So that is how I get that, um, the grungy detail for this look. And really you just build in the layers to do that. Let me see, I'm gonna try to do this. You're trying to figure out chatting on YouTube. <laughs> I totally understand, this is so new for me. All right, I think you can see, hopefully, the different colors and that pop of the antebellum blue in there. But you can definitely see that area where I did a little oopsie. It was a little bit too dark. So that'll need to get layered just a little bit more to um, lighten it up and blend it in a little bit better. But... I will continue to work on um, the rest of this piece. I'm trying to keep my YouTube videos a little bit shorter because I think that's what YouTube likes. They like a little bit shorter videos and um, just straight to the point instead of like being very repetitive. So I'm going to <laughs> go ahead and hop off of here, let you guys get back to the rest of your night. And I will try to come on uh, possibly whenever I decide to add, I think I'm gonna add some black wax in as like the very final detail before I clear coat everything. And I don't know when I will get to that, but when I do, I'll try to hop back on here and show you guys how I, I build the uh, black wax in to, to further deepen that look of the grunge and the age on this piece. Maybe we'll be adding brown wax as well. I, I'm not quite sure, I'll have to figure it out as I go. But thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you guys so much. Have a wonderful night.